Well, hello, this is Peter Combs from Bitamount.com and PL Combs Asian Art, and today is Friday, April 20th, 2018, and this is our weekly look back at last week's uh, eBay auction results, and we'll take a look ahead at some of the things coming up uh, in the next week. All right, and before we get into it, uh, a couple of things I wanted to mention that have been going on in case you haven't been on the site this week. Um, we, uh, just, oh, first, I just want to remind you that uh, Rob Michael's sale uh, is scheduled at starting on April 28th and 9th. You can bid online. Um, we did a blog on it. Um, he's over in Belgium, Rob Michael's Auctions. Easy to find, easy to register. Um, uh, check it out. It's a very good sale. There's uh, almost 1,200 lots in this sale, Japanese and Chinese, with a lot of Ming and very good Qing examples and uh, so forth. The other thing that I wanted to mention was this. This we, we had done this video, as you all, many of you know, on um, the Lauren Gallery auction that's taking place in Roswell, Georgia, today and tomorrow. Um, this re regrettable event uh, is just a, a, a horror of reproductions, fakes, and copies. Um, they are listing this through uh, several Chinese websites to lure those folks in. And um, uh, we decided we'd do a, a blog on it this week because so many people emailed me about this auction and commented and so forth. So we did that and put in uh, some of the, uh, commented on some of the pieces they're selling. And we'll do a follow-up on the auction results and maybe throw in what real pieces bring um, in, in for comparison. All right, but it's uh, very unfortunate, and uh, we we got one email from a guy um, in particular who had contacted them and asked about their called. Here's, here's an excerpt from his email. He basically said, you know, what's this? What's the deal with your scam? Um, which I think I tend to agree with him. And Lauren Gallery sent back a reply, and uh, you can come and read it. It's pretty funny. Uh, the the thing that was most striking about it was the response from from Lauren Gallery was nearly word for word uh, identical to the response somebody else got uh, when, when um, uh, Eden Galleries, just up the street from where Lauren Galleries is now, uh, had a sale last year. And I, I'm pretty convinced they're the same people. They're just operating their circus under a new tent. At any rate, we put it on here. We also included a link to their Facebook page. So feel free to go over there and leave comments. Maybe, maybe uh, some of the people they... Uh, sucker into bidding over there will um, maybe bail out on their invoices and not pay their bills, uh, which I hope does happen, um, just as a personal note. All right, and now on to this. This was a, 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 a catagon that we had on the newsletter last week, a rather unusual one, as many of you are probably aware. And unfortunately, the, the man that sold it reneged on the deal. Um, he canceled the transaction after it sold. It sold for a little over $600, which might have been a little on the low side, but it's an auction. And uh, he, he violated his terms of service, terms of agreement with eBay. I did call eBay and talk to him about it, and they are um, contacting the man to uh, uh, warn him about doing this in the future with his account. All right, you sell something, you sell it, all right, and don't renege on it. One of the, our forum users had uh, um, uh, been the winning bidder, and he was very disappointed, and I, I feel badly that we included him. We will not include that seller in the future if we can help it. All right, and then on to this. This was uh, something that was in Josh Chamberlain's auction. Um, Juice1499 is his eBay um, username. <clears throat> it's really beautiful, probably 18th century Mughal uh, style jade, uh, a covered pot with hand curved handles. Really nice example, just a lovely piece of jade. Um, take a, a look at it here. So you can get, you, he does really good photography, so you can get in close. And you can see the characteristics of the carving and the work that was done on this. This was a nice piece, and uh, it did very well. It brought $38,988, a very good price. But it was a nice piece of jade, um, and, uh, and has a chin lung mark on it. All right. And now uh, on to this. This was another piece. I'm going to do a couple of things that were in Josh's sale because I, I like them. I like Chinese paintings, as a lot of you know. <clears throat> and this was in the sale. I like this a lot. It's a domestic scene. Of a, of, a, of a family, just a sort of average, uh, everyday Chinese family with a child inside their little garden and so forth. And uh, just beautifully done inscribed, probably uh, 18th or maybe early 19th century picture. And uh, uh, it brought $4,049, which is not a bad price for that. That's a nice painting, beautiful painting, lovely. And uh, he also had this Kangxi box, which I loved. Um, and those of you out there like Kangxi porcelains, I'm sure you saw this. This is a beautiful box. It had been once sold by Marchant, still has the label on it. 
Uh, what's really nice about this is the porcelain is just beautifully white, and the the, the blue decoration, uh, the underglaze blue, the co is just a really strong cobalt color. Just very nice coloring and beautifully drawn and uh, very well potted. Here's a picture of the bottom, all right, with, still with the Marchant label, but that, you know, classic uh, Kangxi foot rim on it and so forth. And uh, it, did, it did fine. It brought $7,100. Nice looking, nice looking box. And then on to this. This is, if you collect Harado, you want to keep your eye on eBay because um, a lot of sellers put Harado up here and don't know it's Harado. And um, you sort of have to, it takes a little bit of hunting. But these were listed as Harado, and we put them up. These are monkey groups. The guy had a couple of uh, lots of monkey groups. And uh, these were very nice. I like these. And they in Harado, in Harado, they didn't make a lot of figural pieces like this. Um, typically, uh, but these these were just lovely, and uh, they were, they didn't go for a heck of a lot. I mean, well, they brought seven hundred eleven dollars, so around uh, you know two hundred and twenty five dollars per piece, which isn't bad. Okay, perfectly good uh, good purchase price to make. Um, but until the Japanese market comes back, these will continue to be relative relatively great bargains. And then uh, a seller over in Spain we keep an eye on, who's a fan dealer. And she gets some great Chinese fans, and this was one of them. This is a really nice fan, uh, very high quality uh, decoration. Probably uh, the paint was probably done around 1830 to 1840, somewhere in there. And you notice the blades are all different uh, materials. Uh, one is enamel. This is tortoiseshell, ivory, and normal. They go back and forth, uh, but beautiful quality. The uh, painting quality on this is quite excellent. And also notice the gold, uh, the gilt uh, filigree up the sides. Okay. Uh, just uh, really, really nice. Here's a shot of the uh, of the blades. Uh, beautiful piece, and uh, it did quite well. It brought nineteen hundred and twenty-five dollars, which is not an overpay for one of these. These are highly collectible, and th this is a particularly good one. Nice China trade one. Uh, the faces were not done in ivory. Sometimes on these early fans, if you look at them carefully, the faces of the figures on the fan are actually tiny little bits of ivory that are painted. All right. Uh, this one didn't have that. And then there was this bowl, this Jijing Mark and Period bowl that was uh, um, on last week. Uh, a couple of people on the forum page brought this up because they liked it a lot. Um, uh, our friend Joe saw it and commented on it. It was a beautiful bowl. At the time, it was up to about $800 or $1,000. And uh, we had a little talk about it. And uh, in the end, it did just great. It brought uh, $3,217. Uh, but a, a nice bowl and unusual, very much in the chin, but it's Jai Jing mark and period, but it's very much in the Chin Lung style. If that didn't have a um, Jai Jing mark on it, you'd, most people would just assume it to be Chin Lung period, late Chin Lung. All right. And uh, then you have this, this, this uh, frame. I, uh, nice old frames, are, are, I think, are just great, uh, the, the way the Chinese did them. And this one's fully pierced and reticulated. Uh, very fine quality uh, carving all the way around. He had it up as a um, uh, as a uh, early 20th century one. It might have been, but it could have been a little older. This was this was beautiful quality, just beautiful, and it was in nice condition. And it went for a relative, I think, a pretty pretty a pretty reasonable price, um, 426 dollars. All right. Um, if you if you shop around for for new frames, you'll you'll see how much they cost. A frame like this new would be very expensive. Um, but this was a beautiful thing if you had a picture to put in it. And uh, then there was this uh, nice Kung Shi Femi Ver bowl. Uh, rather unusual pattern on it, but nicely done, rather simply decorated with this floral device with gilding on it. Uh, here's a picture of the bottom of it. Nice looking foot all the way around. Good example. Here's the, uh, some nice overglazed blue, which you typically see on these. Um, toward the end of the Kang Shi period, they didn't use uh, too much underglazed blue. And uh, it did pretty well. It brought $1,237. Uh, Arthur Potts had this over in Dorset. Nice, nice piece. And uh, again, we see these uh, big platters um, turning up here and there, and they're starting to, uh, they're still uh, doing fairly well. This one uh, is, was, uh, I think it was fairly large, 15 or so inches. Um, nice and a yellow enamel on it. Good use of Famille Rose. Uh, nice, nicely done over in here, the way the, uh, the swag under the table is done. And uh, this did quite well. It brought $2,250.
which is in line with what other big platters have, have brought in the last uh, 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 year or so. They, I've noticed that these, especially ones with mandarin scenes on them. Oh, this was Josh. Oh, I, I didn't realize that. Okay. It was 14 inches. I remember it was close to 15. So there it is. So that it was a nice platter, beautiful platter. And uh, this was a, one of the relative bargains of the week. This was a nice uh, 18th century Qinlung period uh, China trade export Famille Rose terrine. Very nice quality. Had a couple of little nicks around the edges and so forth. Some minor discoloration with boar's head handles on the ends. And this uh, uh, lily on the top is a handle. But uh, uh, very nice quality. Look at, look at the enameling on this. It's like here, it's just superb quality. Really is, really, really nice. <clears throat> okay, and uh, this thing went for a bargain. Um, look at this. Um, oh, it didn't sell. $355 reserved, not met. I didn't notice that. I'm sorry. Um, but I was surprised it didn't go much higher than that. I, I thought this terrine would bring, uh, mm. you know, six, seven, eight hundred dollars anyway. Um, $355 would have been a, a steal. I was shocked that it didn't bring more. All right. Maybe the guy will put it back up. All right. Let's hope. It's a nice, nice piece. Um, he was a seller in the U.S. And uh, then you have uh, uh, this uh, nice piece of uh, 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 carved uh, rock crystal, beautifully done, uh, done in a melon form with a, with a, with a stem handle on top, uh, very nice quality, so forth. This could be Indian, it could be Chinese, could be Mughal as well. Um, I, my, my gut says it's probably Chinese because it's a melon, but uh, very nice quality, beautiful quality. And um, he wasn't sure what it was, Russian, Chinese, so forth. And it brought $938. Um, and it, comes with, it came with that really nice little stand, nice 18th century stand. All right. Nice looking piece of carved rock crystal. And um, then there was this, the Wan Lee plate uh, with, a, with, a, with a grasshopper in the center. This was a very pretty plate, uh, a known pattern, nothing rare about it, but a sweet example. Uh, here's a picture of the back of it, very typical uh, crackerware uh, uh, plate with uh, uh, some kiln grid on it and these, uh, these uh, you know, pedal devices around the rim. And um, it did exactly what it should do. It brought $428, which is right in the range, a uh, very typical price for one of these. All right, and then there was this, the Sung, little Sung double fish bowl. This wasn't a high-end one. It's not an imperial one. Now, it's got some obvious, you know, it's got some nice crackle, though. I like that in the, in the glaze. And it's not the, uh, the, the best color one could hope for. It's sort of a tannish green celadon. Here's a picture of the back um, and so forth. But, it, but still a solid example. And um, it uh, brought $1,223, which is fine. Um, that's not a bad price for that. Um, the, the ones that are deep green and really high grade can bring tens of thousands. But this was a nice one, nonetheless. And then you have the uh, probably Kung Shi period fish bowl, okay? Uh, nice looking uh, dish. Here's a picture of the back of it, good looking foot on it and so forth. Um, perfectly good little bowl. And these fish bowls are quite collect heavily collected. Um, uh, and they started, they started doing them in the Ming Dynasty and they continued in the Kung Shi. And uh, this one did fine. It brought $576. Nord Antiques had this over in the Netherlands. But, but rather attractive bowl. It might have had a hairline in it or something. But good bowl. Nice bowl. Um, and then there was this little Femi Ver vase, like a little small May Ping vase. Good looking example. Um, nice, nice uh, figural scenes on it and so forth. And uh, I like the stand. And um, it was 19, the seller is um, uh, Alfred Ceramics. This is somebody that's turned up lately, and they've had a number of uh, good things. Um, and uh, this one uh, sold for $775, but it was a, a very attractive little vase. And uh, then there was this, the, the uh, uh, Yixing enameled um, Famille Rose uh, open pot. Uh, this was a rather unusual one, and the decoration on it was quite excellent uh, all the way around. Um, or, or it was a porcelain, rather, not Yixing, but done like Yixing, I should have said. Um, here's a picture of the bottom, it was sort of a later 19th century affair. Um, and uh, here it is, okay, and they, he listed it as a Noya Straits vase. I'm, I'm not sure it is, but um, it's a good looking thing. And it brought $1,592. I guess the coloring would qualify it as such. Um, but it brought $1,592. Very attractive, nice looking piece. And uh, then there was a little, uh, this little faceted uh, uh, Kung Shi vase, probably, by the looks of it. Uh, here's a picture of the bottom of it. It might be even a little older. Um, here's the interior and so forth. 
and uh, it did pretty well. It brought uh, thirteen hundred and fifty-eight dollars, and it was a nice size too, as I recall. It was around uh, ten or so inches tall. Not bad, not bad at all. And uh, moseying over to this was the that really nice com sort of uh, a rounded kangxi uh, pot with the, with a nice spout and handle on it. I think this was a great buy for somebody. Uh, this was a very attractive pot. Um, the decoration on it is more typical of what you see on vases of the period, and, and had a nice lid on it and all that. And uh, it didn't it didn't bring the world. It was a very reasonable purchase. Um, this was uh, brought thirteen hundred and thirty six dollars. Uh, that was a nice item, nice piece. And then there was this punch bowl, this Chinese export punch bowl. Why people shoot them upside down like this is beyond me. Um, but this was her primary picture, so that's the one that showed up on the newsletter. Uh, nice 18th century bowl, though. We'll flip it around here. Here's another look at it. Um, beautifully decorated, good quality all the way around. Uh, here's a picture of the foot rim, that very classic uh, um, 18th century foot rim with some of the glaze doesn't get quite up to the edge and so forth. And uh, here's a good detail of the decoration, the European scenes, uh, landscapes, uh, Euro and so forth. Euro well, sort of European-looking buildings, but Chinese boats in the background. <laughs> sort of interesting. At any rate, it brought $1,760, um, which was a, a very reasonable price for that. That was a nice bowl. It was 10 or 11 inches in diameter. Beautifully done. And uh, then there was this really elegant piece of gold filigree with enamel and jade. <clears throat> this little uh, 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 bracelet um, did uh, very well. It brought $2,025. It was a nice example, very nice example, pretty. And uh, then there was this teapot. The, the, I don't think the seller was certain how old it was. I don't think he, he probably knew, but anybody that looked at it would know right away if they blew up one of these pictures and saw, th saw this detail work here. It's clearly an 18th century, early, probably earlier 18th century brush pot. Um, very nicely done. Had a little bit of wear on it and so forth. Here's a side shot of it. Some, um, maybe some minor enamel losses here and there. But a good pot. And, and brush pots of this type are fairly unusual. And it brought $4,494. I suspect he was a little surprised. All right. And uh, then there was this, speaking of Femi Vere, was this late 19th century, but very beautifully done um, uh, uh, planter, plant stand. It was a pretty good size one. Nice thick rolled mouth, nice qual very nice quality porcelain with these uh, background uh, uh, areas of uh, trees, vines, and flowers, and these green ruyi heads going around the top. Nice classic late 19th century lappet uh, rim on it. Here's a picture of the bottom. Bottom makes me think it's probably a 19th, early 20th century piece. But look at the price it brought. It brought $2,915, all right? It's a nice thing. Migulari had that over uh, in the UK. And uh, then there's a couple of more pieces of Harado turned up. I thought these were terrific. And they had minor losses. These are inkwells, Harado inkwells. And these are quite rare. Uh, and Harado, as you know, or you may not know, but many of you do know, uh, they were famous for doing these little tiny, very delicately done flowers, which are just incredibly prone to breaking. Uh, but these were beautiful. This was a nice looking pair. and. Um, Went very reasonably, $150, okay? Um, that, was, that was one of the, I think, one of the bargains of the week, all right? And lastly was this, the uh, Kangxi uh, fish plate that we talked about. This was a quite unusual plate. It did have some rough e roughness to it. The, uh, the rim had nicks and chips and so forth out of it. But the plate itself, this pattern, is uh, quite unusual, quite rare. Um, here's another angle of it. Here's a picture of the bottom of it, uh, very typical Kangxi foot, and nothing to worry about there, the leaf in the center. And um, it did pretty well. It brought $1,280. Um, I think the, the little bits of damage might have held it back a bit. That was a nice piece, though. Um, if you're a, a collector, a real collector, this was something you, you might want to own. Um, if you're an investor, maybe not. But, uh, but as a collector, uh, then there is a difference. Um, that was a nice piece. All right, and then on to uh, what's closing uh, later th uh, this weekend, and um, uh, into next week. There's a there's a number of things on the pay on the site already, and we'll be adding more as we uh, go through the get the newsletter up today. Um, let's see here. We'll slip over to here. Here we go. This was a, a, a plate that turned up. It has a, it has a Guangzhou mark on it. Um, I think it might be a little later, but not a lot later. 
Okay, here's the foot rim on it. The foot on it looks pretty good. The mark looks nice. The quality of the enamels is uh, very good. But what's striking about it is how strong the coloring is. And it doesn't bother me. Uh, the, there's a nice clear yellow, uh, good clear green, nice outlining and so forth. But the uh, color palette on this is quite strong with these peacocks and um, uh, with underglazed blue. And I think this is a pretty nice looking plate. It's up to $116. It closes tomorrow, Saturday. So if, 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 if you uh, like these uh, types of things, uh, check that out. Um, you might get a bargain on it because the coloring on it is quite unusual, but I, I don't have any problems with the date. It might be slightly later than Guangzhou, but it's right in there. All right, and then there's this soapstone figure. This is a very old piece of soapstone. Um, it has an inscription on the bottom, uh, nice, nicely carved, uh, very, very sweet face. has a little ding off the head up here and some edge roughness and so forth, but um, quite unusual. And there is an ins inscription on the bottom, and I believe in the uh, write-up he discusses it. It's up to $739. It's a pretty rare uh, type of thing, but um, you might want to uh, uh, check it out if you're a carving collector. That's a nice, nice, carv nice little carving. And also is this fur hat, this, uh, this sort of mandarin fur hat with the, uh, the uh, red uh, silk tassels, a nice little uh, uh, crystal uh, or glass uh, bead on top. It looks probably, that's probably silver, the fitting, and it's uh, some sort of fur, beaver fur or something. Beautifully done. And uh, it's up to only $162. So if you collect uh, Chinese clothing and accoutrements, it's a, probably a pretty good buy. And another thing that we put up was this. This is, I think this is charming. It's a, chi a Chinese silver filigree uh, a, a boat um, on a very nice uh, wave-based uh, stand that comes with it. And it's a sort, of, a sort of reminiscent of the marble boat that was made for Qinlung um, in, uh, at the uh, Yuan Ming Yuan um, in the pool. Uh, they had that big marble boat. Uh, the Empress Dowager was famous for having lunch on it. And uh, then lastly is this. These are not especially old. They're early 20th century, but a very lovely pair of uh, 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 bird uh, cloisonne uh, uh, chargers. Uh, nice quality, and they do mirror each other beautifully. And um, they, they may be a relatively uh, good buy. Right now they're up to $150. They only have three bids, and they close on Sunday. All right? And that's it for the week, all right? And uh, we'll be back next week, um, and we'll, we'll post something about the auction results at uh, 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 um, uh, Lauren Galleries uh, down in uh, Roswell. We'll see what, uh, what they do to people. And, um, and uh, remember to register for uh, the auction uh, at uh, uh, Rob Michaels. And uh, if you haven't subscribed here yet, please do. And if you, haven't got, if you don't get the weekly newsletter, please uh, si sign up for that, and you'll get a notice every week when it's updated. All right? Thanks so much for visiting. Have a great weekend. And if you're out there shopping around, good luck. All right. See you next time. Thank you. Bye-bye.